Good morning to you, Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your hurricane outlook and discussion. Obviously, Hurricane Joaquin is that discussion. For the first day of October 2015, I'm going to go over what could be one of the biggest forecast busts in a long time for the National Hurricane Center and the American-generated computer models, the GFS, the HWARF, the GFDL, etc. and so forth, and how all of this transpired over the last few days to get us to where we are now. This is the very first forecast issued by the National Hurricane Center back on Sunday the 27th at uh, 11 p.m. Eastern Time. This was Tropical Depression 11, forecast to remain a depression and kind of hang out here in the southwest Atlantic, really not do much, and that was that. Here we are today, Hurricane Joaquin, 120 miles per hour, 942 millibars on the pressure, and obviously it is a beast of a hurricane battering the Bahamas. In this situation, uh, there is no question in my mind that the intensity forecast issue uh, is still an issue and the National Hurricane Center makes that readily known in the talks that they do at conferences, public speaking engagements, etc. Intensity forecasting is where the least amount of skill lies even today in 2015. Track forecasting is supposed to be a lot better. We remember back in uh, August we had Erica and it looked like it was going to end Florida's landfall drought and Erica never even made it to hurricane strength. Now certainly it dumped a lot of rain over Dominica and that was a big problem in the Caribbean but we had one false alarm already from intensity and track getting a lot of people uh, ready for a hurricane that never even materialized. Now we have a very formidable hurricane and up until last night, and you'll see as the day progresses today, I think, uh, the model divergence has just been ridiculous and a lot of headaches associated with it. So let's see how all of this transpired because I think it's very interesting. Note that I'll start with the ECMWF, the Euro, that is uh, so revered and talked about as the superior global model. Well, on its forecast, uh, which was issued uh, back on the 28th, the 12Z run, there is what we now know as Joaquin, uh, captured in this cutoff low scenario. Uh, this is the remnants and then sort of the refiring of what was once uh, Tropical Storm Ida. Uh, we go out into time and it eventually showed uh, Joaquin coming into the mid-Atlantic states with uh, quite a hit. Uh, so the Euro back on the 28th of September, that's just three days ago, <laughs> uh, was the first to indicate that Joaquin would come down and then loop up and hit the United States. Ever since this run, that has been drastically different. Added to the mix was the uh, sort of hysteria, this graphic didn't load all the way, uh, of the h wharf, which showed a powerful hurricane coming into New Jersey. It's probably a reason why that graphic didn't load. Um, and a lot of people were talking about, this is back on the 28th, uh, this would be on Monday, you know, well, let, let's don't share that on public, you know, on social media without context. And there was a lot of hoopla about what the H Wharf and the Euro were showing, and it was kind of like, all right, well, let's wait and see. Uh, so let's move along now, looking at the rest of the models as we got into the 28th of September here. And uh, we had a pretty decent spread overall, as you can see in the envelope. That's a pretty big cone if you want to kind of outline it that way. Uh, from New England to maybe the mid-Atlantic states, something like that. Moving on out into time, we got into a day later on the 29th. The U.S. generated models for the most part uh, started to cluster in on a landfall again along the northeast or the mid-Atlantic states. Uh, and all this while the Euro had changed and decided uh, basically southwest into the Bahamas and then back out to sea like that. And there was much talk about that in the Hurricane Center's discussions uh, about most of the modeling the UK met, the US generated models, the H-Wharf, the GFDL, 
the GFS and its related ensemble members, a good deal of them indicating landfall uh, potentially along the U.S. coast. But that the euro, as good as it is, can't be ignored, paraphrasing here, but that's what the, the, the general theme was. And here we see the United Kingdom Met model here, a very good global model, uh, showing a hurricane sitting off the Carolina coast here. Uh, this also initialized back on Tuesday, uh, Monday night into Tuesday, I do believe. Whereas the euro, uh, as I mentioned, you know, was saying, no, that's not going to happen, brought it down and then hooked it back out, you know, passing somewhere in the realm of Bermuda and points north and east from there. And all the while, because of this cutoff low here, the U.S. generated model system was bringing uh, Joaquin down, up a little bit, and then somewhere into this region began uh, to really be honed in on. And all kinds of ruckus was raised because of that, and rightfully so. Uh, I mean, this is a serious convergence of models here, all aimed at generally northeast North Carolina, and the Chesapeake Bay region, Delmarva, Norfolk, you know, big military presence there, the Navy, hello, of course this has to be taken very seriously. And inside of this suite of models, there are uh, very important sort of nuggets of information. This one right here, the AEMI, the Ensemble Mean for the AVN or the GFS, uh, you know, was showing up. The consensus model, the TVCA in here, uh, the HWARF, all of these, you know, for the most part, I mean, there's the Ensemble Mean there. It was headed up towards Long Island, but none of these models, the major American-based models were taking this out to sea like this. Uh, only the Euro was and its ensemble members. Now it had, out of its 51 ensemble members, and quickly an ensemble forecast system, you have your operational run uh, that we see, you know, what we call the GFS, and in the case with the Euro operational, and then they have these supporting members that are fed different variables and they get different outputs. And so you have a much greater chance of seeing the bigger picture that way through an ensemble forecast system rather than just looking at one deterministic model, if that makes sense. It just helps to see the bigger picture like listening to an entire orchestra rather than just one very good clarinet player. Hopefully that makes sense. Musical analogy and hurricanes. So as we move on through time, last night, now this is important, we're only talking about three days here. I'm not even looking at like a 10-day time frame. Sandy was seven to eight days. This is 72 hours that all of this mayhem has unfolded. It's just crazy. So, uh, U.S. government, NOAA, National Hurricane Center, all the agencies, the Air Force with the uh, Hurricane Hunters, the Air Force Reserves, um, the Department of Commerce, the National Weather Service, launching additional weather balloons yesterday and a good deal of the eastern United States the Gulfstream 4 missions uh, that fly out of Tampa and then do you know this pattern around the circulation of Joaquin to get an idea of the environment with more data points. Everything was being thrown at it and you saw that in the discussions and the bullet points. These are sort of extra tidbits of information that they were putting into the discussions. Every effort is being made. and No kidding. And yet the uh, sort of what we call the hurricane models. The spaghetti plots came out last night and they still showed a huge threat to North Carolina and certainly Virginia and maybe even South Carolina. A couple of them kind of meandering out here. One of them the BAM Deep, the beta and advection model deep layer version. Uh, ends up probably this is going to be the right one. <laughs> Funny. Uh, but most of them still into the mid-Atlantic states and yes even the consensus model, even the, uh, the ensemble mean for the GFS, which is right here, okay? So we didn't see this big dramatic shift just yet. Now, some of this was from 18Z, uh, or what we call the 18 uh, UTC run, 1800 UTC, interpolated out. It's, it's complicated, but we hadn't seen a shift yet was the point. But then, overnight, the GFS, uh, with all of this new model data put into it, I'm going to try to get over here where I can show you this panel, finally changed its tune, if you will. 
and this is what that output looked like. Uh, this is from last night's run, the Zero Z run. Here is Hurricane Joaquin down in the Bahamas. There is North Carolina, Florida, just to get your bearings here, and that's Bermuda out there in the Atlantic. Now watch what happens. We go through time, and you can clearly see how Joaquin moves into the Bahamas, lashes them 12 to 18 hours with very, very severe hurricane conditions, and then the hurricane moves north, and you're thinking, well, maybe it's going to have the same uh, tune, so to speak, and pinwheel in here to the Carolinas. And that is not what happened. The additional data input to the model for the initialization finally yielded a different result. And as we can see here, moving out, this is every three hours. Pretty good resolution here on the model. Got to give it that. But you can see it's swinging way, way out. Uh, hundreds of miles, a couple hundred miles farther to the east than we were seeing before. Uh, so that in earlier runs, when the model was showing a landfall here, possibly in Carteret County, in the crystal coast of North Carolina, the GFS from last night indicating that this would be well out into the Atlantic, maybe coming up and threatening somewhere up in the northeast off of the map edge there. And so, throughout time, remember I showed you the very first forecast over here, if I can get to it. Uh, let's see if I can scroll back over. Oh, I see what's happening. My fault. Uh, the very first forecast from the National Hurricane Center was this. And then here we go through time. Uh, this was on the 29th, okay, we're just moving out through time here, and then on the 30th was the implied threat where they said they had to make this pretty significant shift uh, towards the, the coast here. It was made very clear in the discussion um, yesterday <laughs> that this was necessary, yet the Euro was still showing a track that kind of goes like this, you know, and I mean, that's a heck of a change. What if this cone that's this way, uh, they're forced to have to make it look like this over time? That's a pretty dramatic difference. So as you can see, eventually the landfall into the Chesapeake Bay was indicated as a uh, strong hurricane. Joaquin also was threatening to become a major hurricane, which of course we now know that it already is. And finally this morning, because of the overnight runs, the GFS relenting and kind of moving up something like this or whatever, and the Euro holding on to its out to sea kind of deal. The track is beginning to shift, and I think it'll continue to do so away from the United States coastline. And unless something happens in the next 48 hours, uh, primarily out here over the upper air pattern over the ocean, uh, it looks like Joaquin has a very good chance of moving out somewhere in this corridor. So Bermuda certainly wants to keep an eye on it. The Canadian Maritimes as well in the longer term. I'm not saying people along the East Coast need to drop their guard. No way. But in, in, in the trend, it's looking like this is going to head away from the United States. But that can change. And we've seen what happened in just the last 72 hours. Imagine what the next 72 hours could bring. Um, well, let me show you because this is important as we go through these plots here. Let's go back in time a little bit because we're focusing on the hurricane offshore. If this will even react for me. Hopefully my internet will be cooperative. I want to draw your attention to all of this going on. Very heavy rainfall over the Carolinas in association with the upper level low that's carving out across this region. And then strong onshore flow coming from very uh, high surface pressures in the North Atlantic the low pressure with Joaquin and this gradient in between. I guess we're going to have to just say, obviously, if Joaquin doesn't hit, that we are very lucky. But I want people to know how lucky you really are if this hurricane does, in fact, completely miss the United States. Because there is going to be a tremendous amount of rainfall. I talked about this yesterday. Look at this, especially down here in the Carolinas to Virginia and some of this back into the mountains, that's just a disaster in the making. And that's because of all the deep moisture sitting over the western Atlantic coming out of the Gulf and the Caribbean, and this upper level low squeezing that energy out. This is going to be a problem in and of itself. 
if you added a hurricane on top of that, you know what? Maybe sometimes it's just better not to know what could have happened because you think Floyd was bad in 1999? Uh, yeah, this you know, this change is definitely great news and more so than people can possibly realize. Um, so, you know, that's where we have uh, been over the last few days. That's how we've gotten to where we are now. And it's been interesting. Obviously, track forecasting still has some issues. Why did the U.S. generated models insist on that sort of backward C shape curve into the United States coastline when the European model and its ensemble group said, nope, going out to sea, uh, run after run after run? These are questions I can't answer. It's mathematics, it's physics, it's modeling, it's supercomputer power. You know, a lot of it has to do with money being thrown at it and the resources. You know, it's a, it's a solvable problem. Um, but for this situation, I think the real negative here, uh, and I've highlighted the positive, and that is possibly no hurricane hitting the U.S. Great news. But the negative is if you can't trust the forecast, if a hurricane is going to hit, you want to believe that the forecast is correct so that you may move your preparations forward. This back and forth, it might hit, it might not hit, oh, it's going to hit. Now it might not hit, and it's definitely not going to hit. That's not going to work for people year after year. And hopefully what we saw with Erica and what we are now seeing potentially with Joaquin um, won't happen again anytime soon. And it's nobody's fault. Some of the best people in the world are working at the National Hurricane Center on these problems, and their discussions make it very clear that there is tremendous amount of uncertainty in these forecasts, both for intensity in many cases, and in this case in particular with the track. Uh, so there's no finger pointing, not at all. But the negative is inherently uh, that people are going to be like, well, what the heck, I thought a hurricane was coming, and now there's not. And what happens when the next time one is aimed their way? Are they going to wait longer and say, well, let's see if that euro says something. Maybe there's too much information out there, and everybody's an expert, uh, or they, uh, they can't help it because they can read and see, you know, even discussions like mine to help enlighten people. Um, you know, where do we go from here? There's a lot of work to be done. So it's not over by any means. I'm just pointing out how we've gotten here since basically Monday, you know, 72 hours to 96 hours. It's been nuts. Let me emphasize again that the nor'easter type setup and the flood event for the Carolinas and possibly Virginia is in and of itself a big disaster waiting to happen. Beach battering, strong winds, flooding along the coast, freshwater flooding inland, not a good situation at all. And I'm going to be focusing more on that in an update early this evening, plus a blog post on HurricaneTrack.com later. All right, well, that's what I uh, see with everything going on this morning. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. I do appreciate it. If you're following along on YouTube, you can subscribe to our channel and get our updates every time we post them. We do have our app, Hurricane Impact, and our video blogs get posted to that immediately as well. And I'll post these, of course, on Facebook and Twitter and to make sure everybody is up to date on what I know. And remember, I'm just part of the bigger picture. Um, I'm a geographer and uh, not a meteorologist. So I look at this from the perspective of how will it impact people rather than trying to figure out the physics behind everything. That's up to people with uh, quite a higher pay grade and a higher education level than me. So at least hopefully you learn something along the way as I try to do the same. Have a great rest of your Thursday. Again, I'll have a blog post and then a video discussion this evening. I am Mark Suddeth for HurricaneTrack.com, and I'll talk to you again tonight.